Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about something that I think should appeal to just about every user of PDF files, especially those people who need to sign a document. In many cases you can find forms and PDF files that don't have a signature field. And sometimes those files are secured against editing in any form and you can't add a signature field yourself. So how can we get around this? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you take a look at my screen here, you can see that I have a form that was created by the US IRS department and it has a place for a signature and a date. Now there are no fields here. You see, these are all fields around it, but there were no fields here, yet I signed the document and I added the date. And if you take a look at this form and try to edit it, for example, if I click on my edit tool over here, I get a dialog box. It says this XFA form, and XFA means that this form was created in Adobe Lifecycle Designer and exported as PDF. It says it can't be edited. So this form is secure, so I can't add a digital signature field, and I can't copy and paste any kind of data. But as you can see, I have a signature applied and a date applied to this form. Now, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video, about how you can get around things just like this. So I'm going to go over to Adobe Photoshop, and don't worry if you're not a Photoshop user because I'm going to explain how you can do the process I'm going to explain here without using Photoshop and using another utility that's free. The first thing I want to do is create transparency because if I just create a stamp that has this entire image as it is, this white background is going to go on top of any other text in your document. So you want to create some transparency. To do that, I'm going to get my magic wand tool and I'll press W on my keyboard to access the tool. And if you take a look at the options bar at the top, I have the tolerance set to four. You want to set this tolerance anywhere from two to four and you want to scan a wet signature around 1200 DPI on a scanner. Don't use a cell phone. Try to use a scanner and scan at a high resolution, and that way you'll get a very crisp, clear image. So I'm going to take my magic wand tool. I'm going to come in and click, and I select the white all around the signature. However, these closed paths here are not selected. So I'm going to select the data inside of these paths by going to the Select menu, open that, and let's choose Similar. And now I have everything selected. I, at this point, I need to convert this document from the background to a layer. So double click on background, click OK, and then press the delete key. And you can see now I have a transparent file. Now here's something that's very important. You cannot save this file. You cannot use the save command and you can't use the save as command. You need to use another command in Photoshop and that's the export as command. You find that command under the file menu, go down to export and choose export as. A dialog box will open and you can see that in the top right corner I have a format defaulting to PNG, and a checkbox for transparency is also defaulted as enabled. So I'm going to click Export, and then I'm going to call this uh, Trans, let's call it Transig, and click Save. Now that takes care of my signature. I have one other issue though, that date field. Because the form I'm trying to sign and date does not have a date field in it, I need to add another date. So what I'm going to do is create a transparency document that I'm going to add my date field on. So I'm going to close this current file. And no, I don't need to save it. I've already exported it. And now I'm going to go to the File, New Command. 
and I'm going to create a new file and I want this file to be oh let's say 0.75 inches by let's say 0.25 I'm going to make it very small and I'm going to go to create and you can see I've got a very small file here so the document now has data and that data is this white background I need to eliminate this data so the very first thing I want to do is convert this document to a layer like I did in the last exercise so we'll double click on background convert it to a layer now I'm going to select all the data that's control a on Windows or command a on the Macintosh and then strike my delete key now you might think you can just export this out as a PNG with transparency. Unfortunately, you can't do it. If I go to the file menu and I choose export and export as, you can see that my format menu over here does not have PNG and there's no checkbox for transparency. And the reason for that is it needs at least some data in this file in order to access those two commands. So I'm going to zoom in very close here. What I'll do is get my pencil tool. And if you strike D on your keyboard, you get default colors. And X gives you a white foreground. With my pencil tool, I'm going to come into... I can go to any one of the corners here. I'm going to come into the lower right corner and just click and plot one pixel there. And you can see when I go to File menu, Export As... Now, PNG appears and transparency appears. So I'm going to export this, and we're going to call this SIG date, and save it to the same location. I'm done with Photoshop, so I'll quit Photoshop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, if you're not a Photoshop user, how you might create a transparent background on an image. So if I go over to... Uh, a file I have that I'm uploading to my server and you can download this from the link below this video you can see a file and I've explained in this document all the steps you need for Photoshop to create that transparent signature I have at the bottom here two stamps that have been applied one is the date and one is a, is uh, the signature I also have a field here that is going to be the, my signature field to create this stamp. And I also have a link here that will link you to my previous video where I explain a little bit more about how to create uh, dynamic stamps and add the templates and retrieve template names and, and all the, the information you need on creating a new dynamic stamp. In this right column, I also have a description of a service that can create a transparent signature for you. So if you have a scan signature and you can go to this URL and when you come to this page you want to come on click on transparent and here you can browse your computer to upload the file that you want to convert to a transparent PNG file. So you take your scanned image, you browse, you click on upload. This site will automatically export that file as a PNG trans with transparency and you can download that file from this website. And it's just very easy. All you have to do is click on that link that I have in my document over here. All right. So this document explains everything that you need to know on all the steps on how to create transparency with signature files and also the attributes for the fields that you're going to use in the other stamp file. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my stamps. I'll click on stamps here. Once again, if you need to load the stamps, you click on more tools and then get your stamp tool. And you'll see at the ribbon at the top up here, I have several menu commands. The first one is custom stamps. I'm going to open this menu. I'm going to click on create. 
then I'm going to click on Browse, and what I want to do is get my transparent signature file, which is here, and I'll select that, open it, and then click OK. And you can see in this thumbnail, you can actually see it's going to be transparent. I'm going to add this file to one of my documents that I've already created called My Stamps. You won't have this on your computer, but you can add it to the dynamic category or you can create a new category by typing a name up here. I've got a category already created, so I'll click on My Stamps and I'm going to name this stamp. I'm going to call this Sig Trans, like so, and click OK. And now, if I take a look at my stamps menu over here and I go to my stamps, you can see that SIG Trans already appears. That's fine. Now I also have to create a second one and that's for the date field. So let's go back over to custom stamps. I'm going to create, click on browse, and what I'm going to do is go to SIG date over here and I'm going to open that. Once again, click OK. I have just a transparent document here. I'm going to put it in my stamps. I'm going to give it a name and I'll call this date trans and click OK. Now the problem with this is we have to add a JavaScript to retrieve the date. I also have that on the form I'm uploading to my server. So if I go back over to that document and I get uh, click on prepare form so I can see my fields. I have this field here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go control or command C depending on which computer platform you're on. So after I copy it, now I need to put this field into my stamps folder. And I explain how to get to your stamps folder when you, uh, when you want to edit a stamp that's already been created. You can see that I have in my ribbon up here, I have my file that's my stamps file and it's included in my stamps folder on my computer. The directory path you can get for this is explained in that earlier video that I uploaded to my YouTube channel. This is my stamps file and over here I have my blank document which is my date file. Okay and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to after I copy it I'm going to paste that field right in here and you can see that I have this uh, file. I probably want to change the border on this file, so I'll double click, go to my appearance settings, click on border, and let's make that transparent so that I have complete transparency there. And then I might also take this file, edit it, and what I want to do is maybe size this down just a little bit. It's a little bit larger than I need for this file, so let's let's bring it in. Get it close to the size of my document, okay? And it looks like this field is fine now. I'll close, and let's go back over to my tax form over here. Let's go back over to my signature page. I'll zoom in by pressing Control Plus or Command Plus on the Macintosh to zoom in. And what I want to do now is to apply my stamps. Okay, I had it already on there. I'm going to reapply it. So I get my stamp tool. I go to my stamps menu, my stamps, and the first thing I'm going to do is add my signature field. And I create this field really a lot larger than I need because I can then use it for documents of various sizes. But once I click, I can now size this by just clicking on it and then I'll go to one of the corners here, hold my shift key down and then size it down. You can see it's a transparent signature field and that ought to look good enough. 
The next thing I want to do is to add my date over here. So once again, I'll go to my stamps menu, go to my stamps, and then I'm going to go over to date trans, and here's my date very nicely there once again this is transparent as well you can see that there's transparency all around this so I added my fields now let's say um, I'll just add my name here just uh, to fill in one of these fields just to show you how this works okay the next thing I want to do is I want this stamp and that date field to be not data on top of my form, but I want it stamped down into the form. I want to flatten this entire document as my last step here. And to do that, I need to get another tool. I'm going to click on More Tools. Once I come over to my More Tools window, you can see that in the Protect and Standardize category, I have Print Production as one of my tools. Now, I'm not going to click on Add because you don't want those tools over in your right column ribbon over here be unless you are involved with digital prepress and custom printing. So I just want to use this intermittently whenever I need to flatten a document that has a signature field. So I'll just click on the icon to open up in my right panel all the tools related to the print production tools. And what I want to do is select pre-flight. I'll click on pre-flight and notice that when I come into pre-flight I want to click on uh, this right text box over here and type in flatten because that's what I want to do in this document to open up the flatten tools and you can see that they open up as soon as I type in the word flatten. There's two different flatteners. One is to flatten annotations and form fields and the other is to flatten transparency. Well we want to flatten the annotations and form fields so I'll just double click on this highlighted text, bring up a dialog box to save and I'll just give it a different name and you want to name your file differently because if you uh, make any mistake here and yet you, and you need to go back and re-edit the form you can't edit it once it's been flattened as you can see now I come over here and with my stamp tool you'll notice these are no longer stamps you can see this field was flattened. I didn't have any text in any of the other fields, so you won't see anything appearing there, but you can notice that there are no fields available here. Everything has been flattened into the background document. And even the people at the IRS wouldn't know that you actually didn't write your name on this form and scan it and then bring it back into your computer. So. This is just one example of using transparent digital signatures that you apply as stamps in a file and it can be very very helpful for a lot of forms and documents that you need to sign and then send back to the host electronically. This eliminates the need